Patrick Edward Connor was born in Ireland. At the age of 12, he made his way across the ocean to the United States. Connor joined the U.S. Army at 18 and served as a private in the Iowa Territory. He then became a merchant in New York and Texas. When the U.S. and Mexico went to war in 1846, Connor donned his uniform again. He distinguished himself in battle. He began the Civil War as a colonel in the 3rd California Infantry. In 1862, he moved his command to Salt Lake City. His relations with the Mormon settlers there were acrimonious at best. Connor encouraged his soldiers to prospect so that their mineral discoveries would attract outsiders and dilute the influence of the Mormon population. Within a short time, promising silver finds were made at Bingham Canyon, Park City, and Alta. In 1866, General Connor left the Army to focus on mining. He invested his personal fortune in mining pursuits, wrote Utah's mining laws, and introduced navigation on the Great Salt Lake to ship ore to smelters near the Rush Valley. He also laid out the town of Stockton, Utah. Even though Connor spurred mining in Utah, he died relatively poor in 1892. He was posthumously honored with the title Father of Utah Mining. Earl Tappan Standard earned his mining engineering degree from Yale in 1905. After his graduate work, he became milling superintendent for the Federal Mining Company, the Guggenheim Enterprise, in Flat Rock, Missouri. In 1910, the Guggenheims transferred him to Chile to troubleshoot the low recoveries at the new Braden Copper Company mill. The Kennecott Copper Mine in Alaska was his next stop. In 1913, Standard was tasked with enlarging the mill and improving its recovery. Standard invented an ammonia leaching process that increased the recovery rate in copper carbonates to 95%. He improved the concentrators, lowered smelting costs, and built a flotation plant at Kennecott's Beetson Mine. Standard became president of Kennecott Copper Company in 1940. In 1949, Standard and other Kennecott executives were killed when a bomb planted to kill another passenger destroyed the Canadian Pacific Airlines plane in which they were flying. Kennecott's profits increased sevenfold under Standard's leadership. His sudden death, along with top management, put a crack in Kennecott's foundation. Arthur Barrett Parsons earned his B.S. degree from the Utah School of Mines in 1909. Over the next two years, he worked in Utah and Nevada as an assayer, millman, and surveyor. From 1911 to 1915, he served as mill superintendent for Cander Mines Company in North Carolina. Parsons then traveled to India, where he worked for Burma Mines Limited. Parsons returned to the United States in 1918 joining the Butte and Superior Mining Company in Butte, Montana. Parsons had a passion for writing as well as mining. He combined the two as associate editor for Mining and Scientific Press and Engineering and Mining Journal. During this time, he was also president of Mineral Research Corporation. Parsons joined AIME in 1914 and served as executive director from 1931 to 1948. In 1933, AIME published Parsons' best-known work, The Porphyry Coppers, which detailed the history and technical information available on porphyry deposits throughout the world. This work was updated in 1956. During his career, Parsons authored more than 200 articles about mining and the mineral industries. Ernest R. Dickey was born near Cripple Creek, Colorado, and grew up at the mining camps of Oatman and Jerome, Arizona. 
Dickey was serving as mayor of Wickenburg, Arizona, and working at the Vulture Mine when he met John C. Lincoln. Dickey obviously made a good impression. When Lincoln gained control of Baghdad Copper Company in 1945, he asked Dickey to run the operation. Dickey found the ore body unsuitable for underground mining. Despite the challenges posed by working in a remote area, as well as material shortages and limited manpower, Dickey successfully converted the Baghdad mine to an open pit operation. In the 1950s, as a result of trials he conducted at Baghdad, Dickey persuaded truck manufacturers to adopt twin disc torque converter transmissions for heavy duty trucks. Dickey was an energetic and creative general manager. His field test at the Baghdad mine produced significant improvements in earth moving equipment. 